Hi, this is Cynthia McMullen with Alaska Institute of Oriental Medicine, Acupuncture, and Massage Therapy. And I'm here today with Daosher Pei Wolan, also known as Mr. Tai Chi. And we're going to talk about Qigong and healing. So this is such an interesting topic. I know Qigong is really coming out in the mainstream news today. And the first place I want to go is there's a Chinese doctor in, in a documentary who said about Qigong, you have to experience it in order to ask me a question. In, you have to cross a certain line to even understand what I'm talking about. And until you cross that line and experience it, you really don't know what to ask. So with that in mind right there, we'll talk about it. If there's people listening who haven't done Qigong yet, you have to go out and try it and experience it to understand what we're going to be talking about. And once you do, this will make so much sense. So. Qigong is called a mind-body healing exercise. With that, there's so much in the news today, so much information that we're getting into about consciousness and healing. And I want to kind of explore the area of mind-body healing being consciousness directing the body to heal and using Qigong to do that. Where does that take you? Using the mind to heal the body, using the body to heal the mind is a fairly esoteric topic. In some traditions, they believe that only special exalted ones are able to perform these acts. The thing about Qigong <clears throat> is that Qigong takes a lot of focused work, focused concentration, and intent, intentionality. So Qigong isn't uh, a wish fulfillment. It isn't, I wish I was better so now I'm getting better. It's not a, a a superficial mind process. Gee, I don't want to be sick, so I'll focus on not being sick. The mind and body don't work that way. I like to say that the mind and the body are willing servants. Willing servants to you. You tell your body what to do. You tell your body, get up, walk, walk down the street, go here, do this, do that. You tell your mind what to do. You say, okay, figure this out for me. Do this for me. What is this? What is that? And your mind responds to you. So your mind and body are willing servants to you. The question becomes, who are you? You're not your mind, you're not your body. Between you, your mind, and your body are membranes. They're semi-permeable membranes. They're not impermeable membranes, but they're semi-permeable membranes. And these membranes allow for the passage of certain types of information between you, your body, and your mind. In order to, let's say, <clears throat> we want our body to heal from a disease, uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Just pull something out of the air. Cirrhosis of the liver. Well, you can say, body, heal me from cirrhosis of the liver. And the body's going to look at you like a dumb mule. Just look at you. It's not going to do anything. I'm going to look at you. I'm speaking in metaphors, of course. However, in Qigong, if you say that I'm going to do this activity on a continuous basis with the intent of bringing healing to, in this case, my liver and its, its hyperactivity, 
or it is it's excess, then because of the activity and because of the mind intent and because of the harmonization of the body, I say harmonization of the body, in Qigong, all movements are done with the breath, with an intentionality. When you bring in this breathing, moving intentionality towards a particular object, in this case healing the liver, something happens. And it's in this complex where things start to change. Things start to stir, things start to move. Now, do things move for the better? Sometimes. Do things move for the worse? Sometimes. However, things are moving. It's not what it was before. It's not, it's not what it was before you started this intentional uh, body-mind activity. And then this intentional body-mind activity has to be sustained. Sustained. Uh, what, what are we talking about when we say uh, sustaining? We're talking about, okay, we we'll probably do this body activity uh, three times a day every day for the next six months. Gee, that sounds like a religious exercise. You pray three times a day every day to honor your God, let's say. But this type of activity pattern we found causes the body-mind to change in, in, in significant ways. I'm going to tangent in there for, for a moment on some aspects of what you said. In order to get into the disease state, to have cirrhosis of the liver, we must have been using our breath, our mind, our body connection in a way to achieve that. So I think we're already doing that, however, that's, the, uh, that's getting to where we don't want to go. And then there's something that happens where we have to step out of that entire state of stress, chaos, being very superficial in life, or external, maybe is another word for it. And when we start to shift and go internal to the you, the you that is telling your body what to do, or consciously in some way directing our body what to do, the Qigong is helping us to get into that and find order again. And it's interesting that it uses the breath as a catalyst. Am I going in the right direction there for pulling out what you're saying? It is, and you are. But there's misconceptions with regards to the healing process. When people are interested in healing, people are usually interested in spontaneous healing, immediate healing. Uh -huh. Like, um, he touched me and my cancer was gone. I took this pill and my cancer was gone. I had this operation and everything is fine again. So, the Qigong can facilitate spontaneous cure. However, the majority of Qigong uh, work is done over time. So that healing happens over the course of weeks and months and even years, which is not what the average person expects with regards to healing. With regards to healing, a person does not expect to have to do an exercise three times a day for a year in order to realize healing. And this is one of those areas where to say it like that, if you've never done it before, it sounds like a lot. But if you have done it, you know, my introduction... My, if you have done it, there's nothing to it, right? Yeah, so back in the late 1990s is when I had a healing crisis, and I used Qigong to heal in that, and I would do it two, three times a day. And when I felt illness, when I felt disease, it was just such a horrible state to be in. And when I would do Qigong, I would feel so peaceful, so... I would have moments and time periods of bliss and I wanted that more and more and I felt so good doing it that I couldn't imagine at that time not doing it. So it wasn't a, a chore or a, oh I have to go exercise and do this thing. It was a everybody get out of my way. 
leave me alone and just let me do this as long as I can. And the experience in that, it's almost, uh, our language doesn't have words to describe a lot of what is experienced with the energy. I was talking to my massage class about this the other day. What do you experience in Qigong? What does it feel like to you? And people were describing all kinds of different physical and emotional sensations. Uh, talking about the lights that sparkle on the wall and how it kind of feels like that inside your body. Feeling energy beyond yourself. Feeling yourself outside your body. Feeling a different state in yourself. and peace, the peace that people felt was very consistent. Well these are good testimonials and just to uh, describe the experience of doing Qigong. I personally very seldom do I use Qigong to heal a malady. I'm more interested in Qigong to cultivate a an excellent person an excellent persona, an excellent personality. Qigong for me is how to cultivate and make a, a better person in body, in mind, in spirit. And whatever healing happens is just incidental and along the way, you know, along the way uh, this heals. Um, but I had more uh, personal aspirations with regards to Qigong. And using it to you know, to heal uh, various uh, diseases, various chronic diseases, which is really what it's good for, is a s very small part of Qigong cultivation. It, but that's where a lot of people will start with it. Yes. I heard that Qigong can help. Mm -hmm. uh, anxiety is mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. Well, in the beginning, it usually starts that way. People come to Qigong looking f to cure some type of uh, illness, pain, malady, uh, where the body, mind, or spirit that they're suffering. But then we, but, we, we touch something inside of us mm -hmm. with it that... As more, as more and more uh, information and talk about Qigong is occurring, what happens is people are coming to Qigong for the self-cultivation. It, it's akin to the to the to the self-help movements, to the the making myself better movements that are running around in Western in Western uh, culture. However, the qigong allows for you to be minimal in the amount of information you have to take from others, and be uh, maximal in the amount of information that you generate for yourself, for yourself, for your own body, for your own mind. The ideal Qigong for a person is a Qigong that has been put together more like a recipe for their particular uh, aspirations and desires and diseases than it is uh, do this Qigong form and you'll get this, do this Qigong form and you'll get that and you have uh, hundreds of people doing the same Qigong form, uh, that's not using Qigong to its maximum benefit. But it is a way to start. It is. However, cultivating your own Qigong practice and using using uh, Qigong teachers and using Tai Chi teachers to, to inform your own practice is a more generous way to approach Qigong rather than, okay, what exercises do I do to cure my liver? That's superficial, possible, yes, but not the best use of Qigong. How so can I cure my liver? Well, usually milk thistle, right? <laughs> and breathe with it. And breathe with it, yes. <laughs> so with the you, then, going back to that again, because I, I like how that you are the one directing all of this stuff. You are the one directing your body. You are the one directing your mind. And who are you? And when you find out, when you realize there is a you that's actually doing this, it sounds like you're using the Qigong more and more to cultivate that aspect or, or awaken into you, the real you, the true you, more and more. Which is where healing happens. And does this get into also the area of recognizing the illusion versus reality? Right, or what illusion? 
You said the illusion. What illusion? The illusion. Well, there's a saying, life is an illusion. This is this reality is an illusion. That's a saying. Who says that? They do. <laughs> who, who are they? I want to I want to define the illusion before I address this illusionary function that you're talking about. So in a lot of the different wisdom traditions, there's a suggestion or a saying that there's an aspect of the reality that we're experiencing that is an illusion. And there's a lot of people who are looking to see what is the illusion? What is that? How do I wake okay, up from yes. it? Yes, there's a reality that is illusionary and there's a reality that is real. However, the, the reality that is illusionary is also real. Because we experience it. Yes. So when we say illusion, we can be talking about the things that are but are not conscious to our senses. We, we are, our senses don't perceive them. So they're not real to our senses, but they exist. So like microwaves, right? Microwaves aren't real to our senses, but it's undoubtedly that it's undoubted that microwaves exist. So this is, uh, in one sense, you can say microwaves are an illusion because you can't see them and you can't and you can't experience them with your senses. But we can demonstrate the reality of microwaves. Microwaves are real, and this is the the same thing that is involved with the illusionary illusions that we sense and know about, but really can't uh, tangibly express. Or tangibly acknowledge in one way or another. Illu illusion is illusion, but illusions are real and they are necessary. Illusion is the other side of life. And so if you take away the illusion, you're going to take away the the, the ground and the, 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 the stabilized being of life itself. So in going into the Qigong, we do step out of part of the experience. We start to open up to a, di a whole different aspect of experience yes and uh, I'll say for myself anyway and I think a lot of other people that I've worked with we start to experience ourselves more and more as an energy being or feel the energy movement the aspect of that within ourself and that's an extremely creative area it is but it's also an illusion <laughs> But when we're experiencing it, isn't it our reality then? <laughs> yes, it is. So waking up that energy body, that energy aspect of ourselves that goes beyond the physical, and we start to realize that the you is not just our physical body. There's something else. There's a higher aspect of ourselves that is the you, and we become more and more aware of that. There's a higher aspect that we're involved with. Qigong. Qi means life force. Gong means work or cultivation of. So Qigong is the work and cultivation of the life force. Now, to limit the life force to just healing us of a malady is to greatly constrict Qi. The concept of chi. The concept of chi is that chi is the creative life force. So, chi is anything and everything. When you're working with chi, that means you're working with everything. What kind of a concept is that? It's a concept that only a receptive mind can work with. You have to go past the implausibility. You have to go past the conceptual impossibility of working with everything. And work with everything. One of the, the the reason you get all these 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 con comments with regards to working with chi is that once you start working with chi, you open yourself up to the vastness of the universe. And when you hang out in that space for a little while, you start to change your priorities. You start to change your values. You start to change what you think is important. And those types of changes are radical. They are definitely radical. How radical are they? They're so radical, they're banned by the communist government. <laughs> That's how radical they are. I love things that are banned. <laughs> <laughs> the practice of Qigong is highly suspect in communist China, not because it's ineffective, 
but because of how it connects people to a universal consciousness that makes them that, that they differentiate from uh, their social consciousness or their governmental consciousness or you know these governments they can't have that uh, personal freedom personal freedom personal growth personal uh, personal experience it has to be a group collective so the United States is a better platform to practice Qigong on because of our stated personal freedoms so because personal freedoms are, are explicit in the United States, we can take things a lot farther here with regards to uh, personal growth and development, uh, personal enhancement, than a lot of our other countries that have restrictive uh, social platforms. Now that being said, Qigong, Qigong itself originates in China. However, the body mind concept of that of this type of work originates in India with the yogic and, and Hindu traditions. So right in the beginning with Qigong is that you have anti thematic cultures engaging with each other where for example in Christian parlance, well, only God heals or only Jesus Christ heals, right? And for you to assume the power to heal, whether you're healing yourself or you're healing others, is considered blasphemy. Blasphemy. I didn't say it wasn't possible or it wasn't true. I said it's blasphemy. <laughs> Just because it's blasphemous doesn't mean it isn't true or it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just um, offensive to our, to our culture and our God. Well, we see where that goes all around the world, doesn't it? So, when you talk about Qigong and connecting with the creative life force, you're actually in areas that some people ban because of of how it changes the the mind and character and the body of the individual. The Chinese didn't ban Falun Gong because it didn't work. They banned Falun Gong because it did work. And uh, they can't have these uh, free-minded, free-thinking people who, who question authority. Now, in that area, a lot of people will use Qigong, meditation, yoga, and things like that to enhance whatever their spiritual beliefs are, if they're right. religious mm -hmm. or non. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take that away. Well, Qigong and yoga are a-religious. They have nothing to do with religion. So just a comment out there in case somebody's thinking, if I do Qigong, it's going to be uh, against my religion in some way. Well, all religions are sets of belief. You know, this is, this is what, they're sets of belief that people hold to themselves. And one religion is because of this set of beliefs, another religion is because of that set of beliefs, another religion is because of this set of beliefs. Qigong is a lot different than that. And and to experience Qigong, you don't have to believe anything. All you have to do is do it. If you do it, if you follow the instructions the way the Qigong teacher shows you the instructions, you'll experience the benefits of Qigong. It doesn't matter what kind of religion you espouse. And again, a lot of your religions use some of the some of the same techniques that are in Qigong to cultivate and, and, and bind their people together. One of the benefits of Qigong has been said to to have the experience of oneness. Without subscribing to a religion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to be one with all. Mm -hmm. Without subscribing to a religion. So we have on our YouTube channel here, we have a lot of Qigong that people can follow along with mm -hmm. and, and try. Mm -hmm. And is there anything specific that you would recommend somebody, a place somebody should start? Well, considering the, the, the vastness and the broadness of Qigong, remember I said working with the Qi is working with all and working with everything. I've done a lot of in-depth research into various Qigong practices. And the simplest way for people to start Qigong is by simply sitting and paying attention to their breathing, watching the breath as it goes in and out of the body. 
and doing that until they're not thinking of anything but watching the breath. That harmonizing with the breath will put them in in the rhythm of universal rhythms and that will be the healer over time. Just sitting and being with the breath is the fundamental Qigong concept. Everything expands from there. Everything branches out from there. Everything evolves from there. So you'll have people who do Qigong without any intent at all except being and and to be, to be one with the moment now. And that becomes their healing. So another area beyond the breath that it begins to waken up when you start to experience the energy flow of the body, we do experience the actual acupuncture meridians. A lot of times people will experience a specific point, an acupuncture point, but the meridian flow seems to be a very consistent experience, especially if you've studied and you know the meridians and you can feel the energy or the movement of this movement, this breath, activating a certain meridian or even intending it and using that to heal. You can do internal acupuncture on yourself through the Qigong. Yes. Uh, so that's a, just a different level of the cultivation. You start to experience that. Studying it again, you'll enhance that. Yes. It goes beyond that. You can start to feel energy body both inside and outside of your physical being or you may experience yourself as a vibration that expands into everything. Yes. A lot of people dream the Qigong. Yes. But I also want to tell the listeners that all of this is illusionary. All of this is happening in your mind. And remember, the illusion is real. The illusion is not not real. The illusion is necessary. The illusion is not an obstruction. The only thing that the traditions are trying to tell you is that there is illusion. And there's a lot of it. And so, the more you allow yourself to be one with the all, the more you start to be one with your illusions. Because they're necessary. Your illusions are not non-real. So, you know, people say, well, this is an illusionary life. I need to be done with it. I need to be out of it. I need to... No, 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 no. This is an illusionary life, and you need to embrace all of it. You need to allow yourself to wrap your head around all of it. And that's the thing about the mind, the brain. The brain can wrap its head around the universe. It can, it can look at the universe and say, oh. <laughs> right? So... What is that saying about who you are? You're bigger than the universe because you can conceive the universe. And so we usually hang around in these little small comfortable areas of of life and of of, uh, human management. And there's so much more, so much more. And unless you are able to embrace the illusion, which is real, and sometimes even take the illusion and bring it into concrete reality, right? Well, we call that creativity, right? and, 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 and we're awestruck by it, but we do it all the time. So Qigong is working with the all. Copyright. Qigong. <laughs> and working with the all is a, is a um, daunting concept to many until they do it. Then once they do it, they understand. Oh, that. Why haven't I noticed that before? Well, because we keep ourselves too busy. We keep ourselves too distracted. We keep ourselves distracted from that. Meditators. Meditators are associated with warriors. Meditators are the most brave. And the reason meditators are the most brave is because they're willing to be with themselves by themselves, with themselves. That is a scary proposition for the majority of people. It takes courage, you have to be brave. Not because there's gonna be monsters and demons for you to battle. The only thing for you to battle is gonna be your own mind. And what your mind uh, isn't used to, isn't comfortable with, and will thereby create 
all types of imaginative scenarios that are not true, but affect you in all types of adverse ways. Like our good side, our bad side, our, our light, our dark. Right. Because once you're in the Qigong, there is no good or bad or light or dark. What's that? It's all is. It's all isness. One other area that I want to get into is doing Qigong outside in mm-hmm. nature versus mm-hmm. inside. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter because you do Qigong in your mind. You do Qigong in your mind. Your physicality is just an assist. Your uh, locality is just an assist. Hypothetically, you can do the whole thing in your mind. So, if you need a sunny day to do your Qigong, then imagine a sunny day in your mind and do your Qigong. You don't need to actually sit under the moon and the stars to do Qigong because the moon and the stars are inside your head anyway. When you look out at the moon and the stars, the only thing you see is how your sensory apparatus have sent signals to your brain and how your brain has constructed this 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 uh, image inside of your head. So the stars aren't out there. The stars are in your head. It's always an imaginative process. So there is no inside or outside, top or bottom, high, low. Funny thing, I heard, I heard one, one practitioner say, well, you can't do Qigong in a chair because you're disconnected from the earth. Well, if that's what you hold in your mind, then that's what's going to be true. It's all mind. So some other areas that the Qigong gets into that we can talk about next time are using it uh, first for self-healing, but then also getting into using it to heal others. The energy healing, the medical Qigong, uh, medical Qigong energy healing being the external application of Qi from one person to another. And that gets really interesting because time, space, and distance uh, don't matter in that. That gets interesting because of the mindscapes that you have to take unto yourself. When you're uh, studying and learning to use Qigong to heal, you're learning different uh, mind forms and mind patterns that you then can express in the real world. And that expression is taken up by another mind who then incorporates and adopts the mindscape and the mind pattern that you transmitted to them. But it's still all mind. So any last <laughs> statements of wisdom for people who, who would like to do Qigong? Be with your breath. Be. Be still. Breathe. Be with your breath. All right. I'll put links to our Qigong forms that we have on our channel, especially a few that would be really good starting places. And next time we'll get into using Qigong for external energy healing. So thank you, and until next time. You're welcome.